What's the name of the wine that tastes so fine? Guild wine. Guild wine. Yes, guild wine. It's made by the men who grow their own grapes. That's the most important thing. I'm sure you'll agree it has what it takes to make you want to sing. G-U-Y-L-D Guild Wine presents Murder and Mr. Malone. me the office of John J. Malone. Murder and Mr. Malone, brought to you by Guild Wine. That's G-U-I-L-D, Guild Wine. You've read about John J. Malone in Craig Rice's best-selling mystery novels. You've seen him in her hit motion pictures. Now, for the first time, you can enjoy his baffling stories over the air as the makers of Guild Wine bring you the adventures of fiction's most famous criminal lawyer in Murder and Mr. Malone. Malone is the name. John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. They say one of the qualifications of a good lawyer is a sense of humor. I wouldn't know about that. For example, I never could appreciate the humor of a certain Mr. Charles Morgan. Morgan was a big-time gambler in Chicago whose practical jokes I found a little too strong for my tastes. And on this Saturday afternoon, Morgan and a beautiful blonde model named Linda Stevens were planning one of his best in a car parked in front of the Club 86 on Chicago's south side. Now, you understand what you're supposed to do, Linda? Well, I'm not too sure, Mr. Morgan. Oh, what's the matter with you, anyway? Your agent told me you were a hep dame. Look, Mr. Morgan, I don't need a job that bad. Oh, I'm sorry, I... Linda. I didn't mean that. You see, I want to play a joke on this guy. I want to make sure it goes off the schedule. Well, the more I hear this joke, the less I like it. Well, I tell you, there's nothing to worry about. This fellow's a good friend of mine. Well, then why do something as silly as that? Just to settle a bet. He thinks he's a great little man with the ladies, and I bet him 50 bucks he was wrong. But, Mr. Morgan, you promised me 100 for this job. How can you possibly win? You don't understand. It's not the money. It's the principle of the thing. Just want to make a sucker out of Davis. Davis? Yeah, his name's Paul Davis. He's a thin little guy with red hair and pop eyes. You won't have any trouble spotting him. He owns a joint. He'll be in the corner booth. But uh, suppose your friend doesn't show any interest in me. You haven't taken a good look at yourself in the mirror lately, have you, baby? Uh, I'm not at all worried. When Davis sees you, he'll start baying at the moon. But at the beginning, you want me to act in something. Right. That's so he shouldn't become suspicious. Then thaw out and let him buy you a couple of drinks. And after that? Well, he'd probably want to take you out for the evening. You tell him first you have to make a stop at your apartment. I don't think I like that, Mr. Morgan. What's that or not like? Perfectly on the up and up. When you get to your place, I'll be waiting for you. And that's where you're going to tell Mr. Davis it's just a joke? Yeah. I can hardly wait to see him when he learns it's a gag. Why, I'll bet he'll practically die laughing. Hey. Where do you live anyway, Linda? Oh, it's just the next floor, Mr. Davis. Oh, I got it out. You, you promised you were going to call me Paul. I'm sorry. Paul, do you know a man named... A man named who? Oh, forget it. <laughs> you know, I don't get you, Linda. When I first saw you in the club, I immediately said to myself, there's a dame with class. I was surprised when you gave me a tumble. Well, I... I don't often do things like that. It was an impulse, eh? Uh-huh. Yeah, I understand. I get them all the time. Huh? Where do we go now? Oh, it's this apartment right here. 
Oh, here, here, let me help you. No, it's all right, Thames. I can manage. Well, come in. Uh, thanks. Hey. Nice layout you got here, Linda. <laughs> I, uh, think I'm gonna like this. I wouldn't bet on that, Davis. Huh. Morgan. Oh, then you do know each other. You dirty little double-crosser. Oh, no. He told me it was a joke. Well, the joke's over now, honey, so you can beat it. Now, see here, Mr. Morgan. I said beat I... it. If you're a smart girl, you keep your trap closed. Now, go on. I... L listen, Morgan. Shut up. I don't want any conversation from you, Davis. Just want my dough. What dough? Don't Welsh. Sixty grand, you owe me. Oh. Oh, that... What did you think I was talking about? Well, you, you see, I'm kind of low, Morgan. I, I've been running in tough luck lately. Uh, from now on, it's going to get worse. You know, all the boys are laughing at me for letting you hang me up. man in my position can't afford that, Davis. Might give other people ideas. Uh, uh, look, Morgan, I, suppose I pay you a little at a time. What do you call a little? I can give you ten grand now, and the balance... Keep your hands I... down. I was just going to get my wallet. You got that dough on you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's have it. Oh, sure, sure. I, I was going to give it to you all the time. All right, Morgan, get him up. Put away that gun, Davis. Heck, your age. <laughs> well, Mr. Morgan, who's the joke on now? I guess it's me. And you're not kidding. That's okay, Davis. I'll see you again. Now lay your odds. Next time, you won't be this lucky. Because you'll enjoy it. After Morgan goes to all that trouble, Davis pulls a gun on him and leaves him with his tongue hanging out. That's very amusing, Hudson. What happened after that? Oh, Morgan started looking for him again. What do you think will happen if he finds him this time? The same thing, Mr. Lyons. You don't believe Morgan will kill him? Nah. Morgan's all talk. You think so? I know so. I wouldn't last this long as a private dick if I wasn't a good judge of character. Take it from me, Mr. Lyons. It's all a bluff. That's too bad, Hudson. It would be worth a lot of money to me if it weren't. Oh? How much is, uh, is a lot of money? What's the difference? You're not interested. Try me. $2,500. <laughs> you're right, you're right. At that price, I'm not interested. It isn't worth more. Everybody knows that Morgan has threatened Davis. You're on absolutely no risk. Eh... Uh... What have you, uh, what have you got against Davis, anyway? That is none of your business. Either you want the job or you don't. Well, as long as you put it on that basis, Mr. Lyons, let me think it over. Good evening. Hello, Victor. This is Mr. Davis. Oh, yes, Mr. Davis. Uh, I'm in a phone boat at the corner of State and 46th. Uh, anybody been around the joint asking for me? Several gentlemen. What? What'd you tell them? That I hadn't heard from you all day. Oh, good, good. Uh, is Norma there? Who? My wife. No, Mrs. Davis has not been in all evening. Well, uh, when she gets there, tell her that... Hey, cut that out. What's the trouble, Mr. Davis? Uh, some characters in a hurry to use the phone. Hold it a second, Victor, so I take care of this pest. Yes, Listen, you, how would you like a good punch in the nose, eh? It's... Oh! You are listening to Murder and Mr. Malone. A presentation of Guild Wine. Ask any wine expert and he'll tell you this. No wine can be better than the grapes that go into it. And that's where Guild California wine comes in. Guild wine always starts from good grapes. Because Guild wine is made by the men who grow their own grapes. After all, when a man grows grapes, knowing they're to be used in his own wine, isn't he likely to give them more care than the grower who sells his crop on the open market? It is more than 630 of these men, all growing grapes for their own wine, to be made in the guild wine cellars they all own together, 
who form the cooperative Wine Growers Guild. If you'd like to try their wine, ask for Guild Wine. It's made by the men who grow their own grapes. That's G-U-I-L-D, Guild Wine. Look for the big red man on the label. And now back to Guild Wine's presentation of Murder and Mr. Malone. Well, as you probably guessed, Paul Davis never did complete that phone call. Thirty-five minutes later, he was on a slab in the morgue, and the cops in Chicago were out looking for Charles Morgan. But apparently they weren't looking in the right places, for when I came home that afternoon, I found my door unlocked. No sooner had I opened it than I was challenged with... That you, Malone? What the devil? Shut the door. Now listen, Morgan. Shut it. Just keep your hands right where they are. What are you doing here? I'm hot. I haven't you heard. That still doesn't answer my question. I don't see why not. I'm wanted for murder. You're the best lawyer in Chicago. Doesn't that add up? Not to my liking, Morgan. You better get somebody else. Listen, Malone. Maybe I haven't handled it right, but I didn't kill David. Now why don't you tell that to the police? You don't think for a minute they believe me. Suppose I told you that I don't either. Listen, Malone, I know you don't like me, but give me credit for a little intelligence. If I was going to knock off Davis, would I shoot my mouth off all over town? So? So I tell you I didn't kill him. And who did? I have no idea. Okay, Morgan, I'll see what I can do for you. But first, I want you to surrender to the cops. Oh, no. And it's no deal. Now, wait a minute, Malone. I... I'll make you a proposition. I'm not interested. Oh, for Pete's sake, give me a chance, will you? Thought a man is presumed innocent till he's found guilty. Do you lawyers just say that because it sounds good? Well, we have. I'm convinced with any luck you can clean this up in a couple of hours. If you haven't by then, I'll give myself up. What'll you do in the meantime? Stay right here. Now, what's to prevent me from walking out and calling the police? Nothing. Oh, you, uh, just trust me, huh? That's right. Now, this is against my better judgment, Morgan, but you got yourself a lawyer. <laughs> Yes? Mrs. Norma Davis? That's right. My name is John J. Malone. I'm sorry to bother you at a time like this, but I'd like to ask you some questions about your husband. I've told the police everything I know. I'm uh, working on a different angle. Come in. Thank you. Now, what is it you want to know? Have you any ideas who might have killed your husband? Yes. Charles Morgan. I mean, besides Morgan. No. Paul didn't have an enemy in the world. Well, you know, that's not true, Mrs. Davis. Your husband wasn't exactly the most popular citizen in Chicago. How dare you say that to well, me? I, only I won't met... have you talk that way about him. I'm tired of these insinuations. What do you know of the kind of man Paul was? I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. Go on and get out. Mrs. Davis. I don't want to I hear have... any more about it. Leave me alone. Permit me to congratulate you, Norma. That was a marvelous performance. Thank you, Raymond. You think I convinced Mr. Malone that I was a heartbroken widow? How could you help it when you practically convinced me? Come here, darling. Let me console you. Just a second. Yeah? I'm looking for a guy named Hudson. Well, look no further, Mr. Morgan. You Hudson? That's right. One of my friends told me you wanted to see me. He told you right. Care for a drink? Yeah, I could stand one. Yeah, help yourself. The bar's in the corner. Uh, pour me one while you're at it. All right. You're in a bad spot, Morgan. You bring me up here to tell me that? Yeah. You see, I know who killed Paul Davis. What? You heard me. That one mine? Yeah. How, uh, how you fix for cash? What do you mean? I got a lot of information to sell, and it's going to the highest bidder. You mean you can clear me? I'm not doing any more talking until I see the color of, uh, the color of your dough. How do I know you got merchandise? Oh, I'll give you a sample. Did you know that Davis's wife was two-timing him? With whom? <laughs> That's, uh, that's all you get for free. But, uh, you can use that kind of stuff, can't you? Listen, Hudson, I want you to talk to Malone. Who? John Jay, he's representing me. Are you kidding? No. Can you talk to him? Oh, sure. 
Provide and I can make a buck. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. Now, I'm going back to Malone's apartment. I want you to call him there in about 45 minutes. You tell him what you told me about Mrs. Davis. Oh, no good, no good. Get the dough up first. Now, look, Hudson, I only got a grand on me. I'll give you another four the next time I see you. Okay, Morgan. You got yourself a deal. <laughs> Morgan? Morgan! Oh, great. Yes, sir? Vincent, this is Mr. Malone. There was a man waiting in my apartment. By any chance... Never mind. Come in. Hello, Malone. I was just asking for you, Morgan. Where the devil have you been? Out. That tells me a lot. I thought you agreed to stay right here. I know, but I had to see somebody. Who? Suppose you tell me what you found out first. Well, not very much. Every lead I explored came back to you. Did you see Mrs. Davis? Yeah, just for a few minutes. What'd you think of her? She seemed all broken up over her husband's murder. She was kidding you, Malone. It makes you think so. Because I've been doing a little checking up on my own. She's been holding hands with some guy who wasn't her husband. Where did you get that from? Private Dick, named Joe Hudson. Oh, that lion. I don't thief. care what he is, Malone. He's got the evidence to clear me. Who did he say killed Davis? He wouldn't tell me. But I made him promise to talk to you. Should be calling you any minute. Morgan, I wouldn't trust that guy in a stack of Bibles. What did you give him? Give? Yeah, a guy like Hudson doesn't talk for free. What did you promise him? Five grand. Well, you better save your money. I tell you, you can clear me, Malone. That's yeah, probably him now. Uh, hello. Is that you, Malone? Yeah, that's right, Hudson. I take it that you've talked to Morgan. Yeah. Well, what do you think? What I think is unimportant. Morgan tells me you can clear him. Sure. Right. Oh, well, I'm not interested. Now you got to talk to him, Morgan. I don't like it, Morgan. Neither do I, but if this guy can save Well, me, make up your minds, boys. Okay, Hudson. We'll be over in an hour. Four, three, four, three. It must be down the hall. Morgan. No, no, here it is. Oh. I want you to let me handle Hudson, Morgan, and keep your mouth shut. Oh, you're the doctor. What's keeping him? I don't know. Maybe he went out, huh? Oh, I doubt that. How can you tell? Take a peek at that keyhole. I can't see a thing. Yeah, because the key's still in the lock. That means Hudson's got to be in there. Hey, Hudson, open up. Hudson! All right, Morgan, give me a hand. What are you going to do? Break it down. Shouldn't take too much effort either. Let's go. One more should do it. Heave. Hudson! Hudson! Where the devil is that light switch? Oh, he's somewhere around the door. Yeah. Watch yourself, Morgan. Wait till I strike a match. I got it. There we are. Malone! Ah, uh, yeah. Is he dead? He's either that or asleep. And with that knife in his back, what do you think? <laughs> listening to Murder and Mr. Malone. A presentation of Guild Wine. If you're planning a dessert bridge party, you want to serve something that, one, goes with sweets, two, has a luscious flavor, and three, appeals especially to women. Well, that something is Guild California Muscatel. For Guild Muscatel, one, tastes grand with all cookies, cakes, pies, and other sweets. Two, has the fruity flavor and aroma of the muscat grape. And three, is such a favorite with women, it's known as the wine women like most. So there you have it. Guild Muscatel, the perfect wine for a dessert bridge. Beautiful, golden-hued, crushed from plump grapes that are grown right on the Guild members' own vineyards in California's sunny San Joaquin Valley. Remember, that's Guild Muscatel. G-U-I-L-D. Look for the big red man on the label. And now back to Guildwine's presentation of Murder and Mr. Malone. Twenty minutes after we found the body of Joe Hudson, Lieutenant McGraw of Cook County Homicide arrived. You should have seen his face light up when he spied Morgan. 
He acted like a man who was prospecting for silver and found gold. It was a nice piece of work, Malone, a very nice piece of work. All right, Morgan, let's go. Hold it, Lieutenant. He's not the reason I called you. No, I know, but I'm not complaining. I told you not to call him, Malone. I'm beginning to think you're right, Morgan. For the same nickel, I could have phoned somebody with brains. Now, what kind of a crack's that? Well, in case you haven't noticed, Lieutenant, there's a body lying on that sofa. Yeah, it'll keep. But as long as you raise the point, why did you kill him, Morgan? Are you crazy? I just got here with Malone. Don't hand me that. It's the truth, McGraw. So you're going to be his alibi. Yes, and you better listen unless you want to look like a jerk and we go to trial. Oh, yes. How long would you say Hudson was dead? Not too long. The body's still warm. Could have been anywhere from 15 minutes to three quarters of an hour. Well, that lets Morgan up. But I don't see how. Because he was with me every minute from the time I got Hudson's call to the time we broke down the door. The whole business took at least an hour. Your word's not good enough, Malone. Okay, if you don't believe me, you can check with the switchboard at my place in the dorman downstairs. Yeah, I'll do just If that's that. not enough, I'll dig up the hacky who drove us over. Well, that still doesn't mean Morgan couldn't have killed Davis. Oh, use your head, Lieutenant. You know both these murders were committed by the same party. Hudson knew who it was. That's why he was killed. I still say it was Morgan. Are you crazy? Hudson was going to clear me. Keep quiet, Morgan. All right, Lieutenant. I'll advise him to confess if you can show me one thing. What's that? How did he get in here? You can see the only door was locked from the inside. So what? He could have used the window. Oh, yeah? Well, take a look. Yeah, there are bars on it. That's right, and nobody but a midget could fit through the open. Then there must be another door. Forget it, there isn't. Well, then it was a physical impossibility for anybody to have killed Hudson. Yet it was done. How? I can't tell you, but maybe I can take you to the little lady who can. <laughs> All right, now listen, Malone. If the DA ever finds out I let Morgan go, he'll have my... Wait a minute. Isn't this the house where Paul Davis lived? That's right, Lieutenant. Well, you can't bother his wife now. Why not? Because her husband was just murdered. Oh. Well, she may surprise you with what she knows about it. Morgan told me she was being romanced by some character. Who's it? I don't know. Apparently neither did Davis. You ask me, McGraw, I have a... Yes? Hello, Mrs. Davis. Remember me? Uh, not too pleasantly. Oh, well, may we come in? I'm sorry, Mr. Malone. I'm busy. This gentleman would like to ask you a couple of questions. This gentleman means nothing in my own life. You never can tell. He's a lieutenant in the Cook County Police. Oh. Yeah. Well, it, it... Just that the house is in such a mess. Well, we uh, promise not to stare. Who was this, Norma? Norma! I, uh... I think you're being paged, baby. It's, uh... It's nothing, Raymond. For a moment, darling, I was... Uh... Hello, Lyons. Malone. Lieutenant, I can explain everything. Sure you can, but suppose we do it downtown, huh? Downtown? It's customary, Mrs. Davis, when the police are questioning suspects. But we've done absolutely nothing. Nothing but murder your husband and a man named Joe Hudson. That's a lie. Do you deny that you and Lyons were busy in the romance department behind your husband's back? Yes. And what's Lyons doing here now? He's just helping me. Like he helped you murder Joe Hudson? No. Just a moment, Mr. Malone. I thought this gentleman was the officer of the law. Yeah, you're right, Lyons. But if you think my questions are going to be any less embarrassing, you're in for a bad shock. Joe Hudson was murdered at 1045 tonight. Now, where were you at that time? With Norma, here. That's right. Oh, now, that's what I call a wonderful alibi, Lieutenant. Too bad there wasn't anyone else around to substantiate. Oh, but there was, Mr. Malone. A justice of the peace in Cicero. I think he may remember us. Why should he? Because I gave him a hundred dollars to perform the marriage ceremony that made Norma here Mrs. Lyons. It doesn't make sense, McGraw. Yeah. Hey, will you watch where you're driving? I tell you, there's something screwy about that marriage. You saw the license. Doesn't it strike you as strange that within 12 hours after a husband is murdered, Mrs. Davis marries another man? Of course it does, but there's no law against it. As an attorney, you ought to know that better than anybody else. Yeah, but an alibi like that must have a hole in it. Yeah, well, you show me where. And after you do that, show me how either Mrs. Davis or Lyons could have murdered Hudson. If it was a physical impossibility for Morgan to kill him, it applies to them, too. Hold everything. What's the matter? Oh, what a chump I've been. Yeah, well, they say confession's good for the soul. I tell you, I got the answer to all of it, Lieutenant. On the level, Malone? Yeah, I know who killed Hudson. And with the help of Morgan, I'm going to prove it. I don't see what you're driving at, Malone. I don't know anything about Mrs. Davis except what I told you before. Well, how did you discover she was seeing Lyons? I didn't know it was Lyons. 
Yes, all Hudson told me was with some man. Uh, how well did you know Hudson? I met him for the first time today. He got in touch with one of my friends and said he wanted to see me. Oh, well, that uh, puts us right back where we started. Oh, look, why don't we drop the whole business, Malone? Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Sure. Cops know now I couldn't have killed Hudson. That's where you're wrong, Morgan. You mean they still... No, no, but I do. What are you babbling about? I know how you managed it. Do you? Yeah, it was pretty clever. I can't blame myself for not seeing it sooner. No wonder you insisted I go and see Hudson. Still waiting to hear you explain how I killed him. I'm saving that for the cops. Don't kid yourself, Malone. You've done all the talking you're going to. Oh, put away that gun, Morgan. You don't think I'd be fool enough to come up here alone? Funny, I don't see anybody around. You're not looking in the right place. Get down, Malone. I'm warning you, Morgan. You better throw your gun in the middle of the room. You want it, Lieutenant? Watch it, Malone. He may be acting. Well... With that hole in his forehead, Lieutenant, it doesn't call for much ability. You can drop me off at the corner, Lieutenant. Well, it's, uh, Ben Grant. Hold it, Mr. Mellon Malone. Aren't you forgetting something? I got a report to make. Well, who's stopping? You are. Well, you know that Morgan killed David. Oh, sure. I was the first one to say so. Yeah. <laughs> You should have stuck to your gun. Well, when you tossed in all that razzle-dazzle about Hudson's murder, you kind of threw me. In. Now, don't feel too badly, Lieutenant. I was right with you. Of course, I'm reconstructing now, but this is what must have happened. Ryan's tried to hire Hudson to bump Davis. Hudson said he'd think it over. When Davis was killed, Hudson knew immediately that if he didn't do it, Morgan must have. Well, I don't see how that follows. It could have been Lyons. Oh, no. If Lyons were willing to do the job, why did he approach Hudson in the first place? Oh, no. It had to be Morgan. When Hudson realized that, he tried to shake down Morgan. He even told Morgan if the price were right, he might be induced to frame Davis's wife. So Morgan played along with him, asked him to get in touch with me. Mm-hmm. Now we're coming to the part I want to hear. Well, when Morgan went to meet Hudson, he knew it would be the first of many such meetings unless he took steps. So he uh, slipped the mickey into Hudson's drink. Well, why didn't he kill him then and there and be done with it, huh? Well, because he needed an alibi. And I was it. Well, I don't get it. It's uh, pretty simple. He needed someone with him while he murdered Hudson. Why? Yeah. Remember you said it was a physical impossibility for anyone to get into that room and kill Hudson before Morgan and I broke down the door? Yeah, I remember that. Well, you hit the nail right on the head. It was a physical impossibility. So that means Hudson was killed while I was in the room. All right. Now, let me get this straight, Malone. You mean while you were hunting for that light switch? Morgan was hunting for a place to plant his knife. Wasn't he taking quite a chance there? How? Hudson was drugged. He couldn't make an outcry. A knife doesn't make any noise at all. Yeah. Well, that'll learn you. Now, the next time I say something, you'll listen. I told you Morgan was the killer all along, didn't I? Yeah, well, you'll have to forgive me, Lieutenant. I, uh, I've been hearing so many radio shows, I forgot it wasn't unconstitutional for a cop to be right. <laughs> Let's hope this establishes some sort of a president. to pay protection money. He believed in freedom of enterprise. He learned the hard way that murder is a bad business. I'll fill you in on the details next week, so why not pick me up at my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. Frank Lovejoy was starred as John J. Malone and appeared through the courtesy of Story Production. Our program is directed by Bill Russo with music by Johnny Duffy. Murder and Mr. Malone is produced by Bernard L. Schubert. And now this is Art Gilmore inviting you to tune in next week. The events and characters depicted in this story were entirely fictional. Any resemblance to actual places or people, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. Murder and Mr. Malone has come to you from Hollywood and is presented by the Wine Growers Guild of Lodi, California. Yes, the name of the wine that tastes so fine is Gilmore. Guild wine. Yes, guild wine. It's made for the men who grow their own grapes. That's the most important thing. I'm sure you'll agree it has what it takes to make you want to say. This is ABC, the American.
American Broadcasting Company.